I'm Melissa Chartrand. and I'm here at the Katuit Center for the Arts with the Executive Director of the Arts Foundation at Cape Cod, Kevin Howard. Thanks How are you to doing? I'm doing great. I am so excited to be out here. You know, it's so nice to be at the Katuit Center for the Arts because they are just a beautiful facility. They have a beautiful facility here that they do so much with theater and music and art. And I think it's one of the best places to be able to do an art exhibit because it really allows you to tell a story uh, because of the way that the space is laid out. So we're excited to have our Making Waves exhibit here. Yes, this is a collaboration. You've been doing exhibits with the Katuit Center for the Arts for this is the seventh year, is that right? It is. And uh, of course, it, we have the artists, all Cape Cod artists, working around a theme, and we change the theme every year. And so this year was Making Waves. And what is really exciting about the exhibit, uh, apart and aside from the opportunity to showcase all these great Cape artists is that we also uh, have student classes that come through, about 50 student classes that come through, uh, and they have a full day experience uh, where they have a hands-on arts project that they do with an art teacher. They hear from the artists themselves about their inspiration and the mediums they use, and then of course they get a docent-led tour and really talk about the different ways that they've interpreted the, the theme this year. Absolutely, as well as the works are all hung, which I find so interesting, at the level, at, a, right. at no higher than four feet, just so that they have the proper viewing angle. That's right. We um, had an opening uh, reception back a couple of weeks ago, and everybody walked in, and of course their first inkling was, oh, everything seems low. Uh, but of course it is, it is user-friendly for children. And, uh, and it really makes it much more accessible for them. Sure, it does. I, and I, I know that they, as you say, it's very important that they hear from the artist as well. It's much more relevant when they talk to the artist and hear from them and then have those hands-on activities to complement what they're doing. And as you said, there's many school groups that come through. And I've heard stories where some of these students have gone through and then brought their parents back with them. Yeah, we had a very dramatic story last year of a girl from Wellfleet who went home and convinced her family to drive all the way back from Wellfleet to Katuit so that they could, so she could take them through, and actually knocked on the door just as they were closing and had a private tour led by an eight-year-old. It was just fantastic. It's amazing how that's now affected her and inspired her. Yeah, I think the really important part of this is that more and more as art uh, budgets have gotten cut in the school systems, the opportunity to have this kind of experience, to be able to come and have uh, a real connection, to find out who the artists that are living in your town, for sure. example, and also to really understand all the different mediums that you can express your art. Um, it's really fantastic for the for the kids, and uh, you know we've got um, everything from mixed media to art made of found objects to photography right. to we have a. Uh, a sunrise sequence that was created with somebody's iPhone. Uh, and then, of course, we've got oil on canvas and oil on wood and uh, acrylics and encaustics. And it's, it, for them to really understand all of these different mediums is really valuable all by itself. But more and more, I think that uh, because of the cutbacks on school programming with arts, that uh, nonprofit organizations in the arts are more and more becoming the outside classrooms uh, and and I and I think they learn in a different kind of way. I think so and I think as you say not only the variety of mediums but I think what's also important and interesting for them to see is the theme itself and every one of your themes and this year it happens to be waves is figuratively and literally what that wave means and whether it's a protest or literally the ocean coming through or a wave is a powerful force it's really quite remarkable or a hand wave a hand wave uh, as simple as that we even have someone who uh, interpreted the wave as shaving cream waves so <laughs> uh, we really have uh, almost every thought you could possibly have about waves and and that's been the case with other themes uh, last year it was wild things and you can imagine that was pretty wild uh, and so big, and uh, it, so we've really tried to uh, give some creative outlet to the people who, to the artists, to be able to do this. And uh, what's fascinating also is that what they write along with it to make the case of why their art fits the theme 
is in some cases very po prophetic, um, poetic, and also very interesting to read. F fascinating stories and interpretations and stories of where they took uh, maybe a photograph or what inspired them to do the art. All right. Now, for example, we're sitting behind. Tell me a little bit. I know we wanted to talk about a few of the pieces that were here in the show. Yeah, this is uh, actually a hydrangea that has been done on wood planks. And this is, these wood planks are extremely heavy. Um, and it's in six pieces. And it was sort of put together like a jigsaw puzzle. And it's a very dramatic piece. One of the reasons that we picked it up is uh, it's one of the pieces that translates well at a long distance. Um, but very exciting uh, piece of work. And what the artist felt was that the waves were in the petals. And that's where she saw the Her waves. interpretation of it. And then, of course, we have you know, photographs or paintings of waves and boats, you know, racing yachts and exciting um, traditional ways that you would expect. And then we've got um, protest photographs that are very dramatic. And even uh, Mulala Yousafzai, um, they actually did, someone did a portrait of her. And of course, after she protested about girls' education in Pakistan and then was shot, I mean, she's a very dramatic uh, person around the world in terms of making waves. Right. So uh, we truly do have a, a full complement of interpretations. You sure do. And you also have a record number. Is this a new, I know you had a record number of submissions for the show, um, but is this a record number of pieces in the show itself? Yes. Uh, we had 275 submissions and 63 <clears throat> wow. uh, pieces that are represented. And I have to say Michelle Law, who is the, really curated the exhibit, but it did a magnificent job of putting all of that together because of course, with all these different interpretations and different forms and mediums, um, to be able to really conceive how to make this work together. And she really did a beautiful job with that. Um, but clearly, the art, artistic community on the Cape feels that this is an important exhibit, which is why I think we've got a record number of submissions. Absolutely. And as you say, going back to where more and more it's critical, where it's, the arts are being cut out of the school and their regular day curriculum, it's critical that the arts, that, that somehow, some way, we keep arts within the community. And, and also to be able to make that connection between um, the, the kids and the artists, I, I think that they really start to realize that they are surrounded by all these people who are tremendous artists. I mean, the Cape's got such a rich cultural heritage, um, and I don't think that our children recognize where they live. This is really a cultural destination, and in some cases, artist colony. Right. And um, so to really get connected in that way and realize that there's that much going on, I think is really inspiring. And, you know, we had another story about a kid who came two years ago, a uh, young boy, who every time the docent would stop along the tour, he would raise his hand and was really enthusiastic and wanted to know all this detail about how they did things. And, uh, and at the end of the tour, the teachers went up to the docent and said, you know, that young boy had a red shirt on. And they said, yes, of course, he raised his hand at every stop. And they said, yes, he's never actually spoken in class ever. Uh, oh, goosebumps. Yeah. So, you know. How powerful. How powerful. So we feel if we can even impact one student in that way, because that may be the future artist of tomorrow. Uh, and we also feel like the creativity that people are, are able to develop, the students are able to develop, uh, is what is going to create critical thinkers of Absolutely. tomorrow. These are the Steve Jobs. Those are the, the, the real um, cognitive skills that you need in order to be the innovators of tomorrow. And as long as our, we want our country to continue to be innovative, we have to develop these young minds. Absolutely, and, and, and the way to express themselves. And this shows that there's not just one way that you can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and as I say, I think I, I'm, I'm sure you did the same thing when you were a kid, went on class trips. And I can still remember class yes. trips um, because they were much more powerful. You learned a lot more just because you were there and you were in the moment. And That's right. It was, it was really 
even even the bus rides yeah <laughs> <laughs> make a difference and i think as you said too the story you told about the young woman who brought her family so even as you say not only did the children maybe aren't aware of what's really here but perhaps some of their families as well who've never really realized how and, fortunate and, and, they are. and that's a, a a wonderful family experience that i think is uh, that I have concerns about are, are going away, that not enough families are doing things like going to a museum uh, or doing things in, in the arts that they share together. That's and it, right. it's too easy, I guess, to, to just do things that are, you know, um, watch television or video right. games or whatever and, and, and a little bit more pop culture stuff. Um, but I think Again, an exhibit like this is very accessible. There is something that everybody will be moved by. Absolutely, and the exhibit is free for it everyone is. to come in, and the exhibit is through uh, the middle or end of February. February 23rd. February 23rd. And of course, we would encourage any other events that are happening here at the Kazooit Center, come and you can have a twofer. <laughs> go, to a, go to an event. Uh, it's beautifully set up here with uh, cabaret style for their performances for this two month period and then you can see the exhibit too. That's right, it's a great twofer. Well, you can get all the information that you need about the exhibit, Making Waves, right on the Arts Foundation website. And we certainly hope that you'll take the time to come see the exhibit. I'm Melissa Chartrand with Kevin Howard from the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, wishing you an artful day.